Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Brought to you by Housing Finance Bank, a financial institution regulated by Bank of Uganda. Housing Finance Bank, we make it easy. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. A very good evening to you and thank you very much for joining us for this edition of Spectrum, live on Radio 1 FM 90, which is also broadcasting live on DSTV Audio Channel 897, live on the different radio listening apps, tune in Afro Mobile, UTV Channel, Radio Garden, and Stream Freak, which can be obtained from the Google stores of your smartphone. But we're also live on our website, which is www.radio1fm90.com. On that website, there's an icon with the word Listen Live. There are two ways to contribute to this discussion. One of the ways is to send us a message via the WhatsApp line 0703-090-090. The other way is actually to call in, time allowing or open the phone lines for you to actually do so. My name is Kenneth Lukwaganderson, your host. Today we'll be looking at the mood within the trading community after meeting President Yoweri Museveni. Now, on Tuesday, the traders uh, from different parts of this country met President Yoweri Museveni at Kololo Airstrip over their grievances. Since then, they have been reflecting on the explanation which was given to them by the president. Among the key issues the president responded to was the fact that there were claims that uh, there are too many taxes in Uganda. The president said that's false. Uh, he also guided the traders and said those who do not want to pay taxes should get out of import trade and consider becoming local producers and exporters. He said import trade, there are specific taxes there which are deliberate to actually protect uh, the local uh, industry in Uganda, which is being built slowly. He also blamed the current leaders of the traders for not guiding uh, the rest of the traders on the best uh, on some of these issues and uh, trying to understand how the traders have actually received them uh, as they deliberate on what transpired in that meeting. I have two panelists in studio here right now. Let me introduce Mr. Joshua Mawerere. He's the chairman of the Youth League at the Kampala Capital City Traders Association. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Mawerere. Uh, thank you uh, and uh, good evening, listeners. It's always a pleasure being here discussing uh, trade. In studio, Mr. Elton Joseph Mawerere, he's a former presidential candidate. Quite so long, uh, your... Uh, Excellency, if I may say, uh, you've not been in studios of Radio 1. Good evening and thank you very much for honoring us with your presence today. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. Mm. Uh, good evening, dear listeners. We expect a third guest to join us. Uh, when he does so, I will introduce him uh, so that he can take part in this discussion. Well, M Mr. Mawere, you've been here quite a number of times telling us what the traders are are up to. Mm -hmm. The last time you were here, you were explaining why you had gone on strike. Uh, now you finally met the president. Uh, what is the mood like um, among the traders after you heard from the president? Uh, the traders uh, surely are lost of words. And uh, the best description uh, of the situation now is that uh, we're very unhappy. Uh, we are not uh, near... Uh, being satisfied with the way uh, the president uh, presented his issues. Uh, we expected the president to address us on the issues we had tabled. And these issues were very clear. It was about tax administration and the part of the technology that has come in to help on tax administration not fitting our mode of operation. We also addressed him on uh, the on the VAT uh, thresholds of 150 million, and uh, we said it is logical to to say 10,000 shillings of 1996 is doesn't have the same value as 10,000 of today, and if that economically makes sense, then. Uh, uh, lifting the threshold makes economic sense to the traders. Unfortunately, the president addressed himself on that. We also uh, had addressed him about tax justification. The different evaluations that change without justification. Mm. And uh, it is also very logical. You cannot do speculative business and somebody 
doesn't give you a workable formula or a formula you really understand and it helps you to do speculative business. So we also addressed ourselves on tax morality in this country, that the taxes must be used um, appropriately. And so we eliminate a lot of cash flows, misuse, misappropriation. And so we pay a lot of interest on, um, on, 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 um, on the loans that we borrow. So the traders were feeling that this burden comes back to them. Now, the president scored a lot of goals in this recent meeting in Kololo. But they were goals from offside, if I may say. He didn't address himself to the short-term solutions we were seeking for. He addressed us on the long term, and we appreciate the long term. We appreciate the, 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 the tax policy he's speaking about. We actually want to go that way. We have some traders who have leaped that long road into industrialization and being manufacturers. And every trader wants to go that way. But it's a sequence. It's a ladder that you have to support for people to achieve that extreme. So what we spoke about, what we expect him to address us on, were the solutions for the things that help us leap to where he was focusing. All right. So you're not happy with the feedback you got from the president? Uh, we, we uh, any way forward? Have you come up with a way forward as traders on your next course of action? Yes. To today, we sat with all the sector leaders. And uh, we were going through what the president had presented uh, himself on. Uh, and uh, one, we think that he never addressed the things we had sent to him earlier. So we are going to continue to pursue that direction. That was number one. Two, we are also encouraging the traders to also be considerate and focus on where he has put the, 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 the bar, where he put the, the discussion. Mm. Uh, become that, investors. That we need to become investors. And we discussed and said, how do we do this, with help or without help? And um, we, we, we had to come up with a few things, like um, we, we are already good at grouping ourselves and doing things together. Uh, so can we focus uh, on, on bringing money together and do bigger things? All right. Uh, but also we, we, we embrace the fact that he said we have another meeting uh, with the leadership of on the, the 20th, on the 20th with the leadership of, um, of, of the traders to focus on how he supports that transition. All right. We'll be coming back to you to hear more. Our third guest, Dr. John Kakungulu Walgembe, economist and executive director of the Federation of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises of Uganda. Good evening and thank you very much for making time to be with Good us. Good evening, here. Kenneth, and thank you for always inviting me All right. to Spectrum. Thank you very much. Let's go to um, uh, former presidential candidate, uh, Mr. Mabirizi. You aspired to lead this country. Trade is one of the key issues um, that many countries hinge on for development, but also for people to actually sustain themselves uh, in terms of income and um, well-being. As a pres former presidential candidate or somebody who has uh, maybe plans even in the future to run for office, when you see how government has handled these issues of traders, um, would you have handled them differently? And if so, how? Uh, thank you so much <laughs> once again. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate the traders, the way how uh, they addressed their concerns to the president in their last uh, gathering. I don't know what were their expectations. Uh, maybe they forgot that um, the NRM has got pillars, uh, its stronger pillars on how uh, it moves the old do things. Mm. <clears throat> but one of the pillars is um, making Ugandans to become poor. Ah. And the poverty you see in Uganda is a stagnant one. Is that part of the 10 point it's program? Plan. We, we don't see that in the 10 point program. We don't no. see it in the manifestos. Did you see anything like that, uh, Mr. Mabiris? Uh, you are just like those people who ask uh, uh, questions like. Uh, where is that one in the Bible? Not everything that it was written. All right. That you have to find there the way how you have to eat, the way how you you have to sit on the table. Mm. But that's what they are, and that's what they are practicing. So if you want to get someone who, who he is really, you look at the actions and acts. So uh, when you look at them, this is a planned thing, poverty, because how can you milk a cow? And you are not giving it pills, and uh, you think at the end of the day it will give you milk. 
That's what they are doing on traders. They are milking them, getting almost everything that they get. When uh, I don't know whether you you heard them very well, and uh, when you look at what is taking place now, mm. many of them are, are, are leaving business. They cannot. Uh, the income which they are getting cannot sustain them. In other words, they are working for government. <laughs> for them, at the end of the day, getting nothing. But because this government wants to kick them out of the of that business, so that. Uh, they can bring in their own people to deal with him. That's really? why. Yes, you heard him in his address. Mm. For him, he's very happy. He's saying, so if you cannot afford paying taxes, why don't you go into investment? But which investment? <laughs> because we have people here, mm. the local investors. They are not given tax holiday, not any uh, waiving all taxes. But when uh, they get the so-called foreign investors, they, those are the people. You know, we don't have foreign investors here the, because the those people the president, who come, the president they don't out, have money. The president read out a list of Ugandan investors who are in Namave and all these other places and said they are enjoying the same treatment like the foreign investors are actually invest, uh, enjoying. That's so they, not they, there's no doubt about that. That's not true. There is doubt because I have heard them several times complaining but f that for them they are not given tax holidays. And uh, not only that, mm. but the so-called investors, those foreigners, eh? mm. uh, how can you have an investor who doesn't have money? They come here, they don't have capital, they don't have any investment, any money to invest, then we, we give them money. Do you know what does, that means? Mm. Those are the people who are just stayed, and they come here just uh, uh, Maybe when they have, they have, they have already... ideas which we don't have. No, 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 not as mm. such, not mm. as such. Mm. Which ideas? Which ideas? Uh, you you want to tell me that there are no Ugandans which can own, which can put up a, an hospital like the one planned that Luboa, which is not there. Mm. So uh, these people, it's just that uh, the government has planned it to make sure that every every Ugandan uh, cannot have money so that they can just be tossed on their what? Uh, just coming on their knees, you want this, we want this. So, if you want to build a trade, uh, maybe a tax base which is bigger, mm. you, you, you reduce on the taxes, mm. but you get, uh, you get um, what you do, uh, you make sure that you have so many people who are paying taxes. Mm. Men are paying, so you would have enlarged your uh, tax base. You create an incentive for more people to get into yes. the tax. But what they are doing practice. today, it is so different. Mm. But to me, uh, I have been following the way how this government is doing things. Mm. And uh, I have told you if uh, the good example is about a, a, a cow, traders are, are being milked a lot. Mm. They pay uh, many taxes, and when you you, you hear him, uh, according to his speech, he was like, oh, everything is okay. Don't think that we shall change. Mm. So for, for him, it's just a free. But when we look into the economy of Uganda, what makes up an economy? What do we have to consider? Mm. So what is our export? What is our input? Uh, uh, we have to consider that. Mm. What do we export? You know, we have factories here, like those ones uh, he has talked about, the, the Indians, Tiles. those ones are uh, textiles for, for Chinese. Mm. But let me tell you this. After selling, they have factories of shoes here, but after selling in Ugandan shearing, they change into dollars mm. and they take to their own countries. And for you, you don't have anything that you So the profits you, are being exported. So in that, that means at the end of the day, your local currency is going to go down. And that is what is taking place. But because these people, they have 
squeezed everything, every juice from every corner. Now they don't have money. The government, mm. uh, you may say that it is already a foreign government, but uh, maybe when you look at the leaders, they are still there. All right. You, you cannot know that it's already gone. All right. Let's bring in Dr. <laughs> Algembe. We'll get back to you to hear what you would do differently. What kind of uh, incentives would you give the traders? How would you address these issues of taxation? Uh, let's hear from you, uh, Dr. Algembe. Your, your mm. take. You, we have heard from the, the trading community. We have heard from mm. our former presidential candidate. Mm. You as an expert, somebody who follows closely what is happening in the trade sector. Not yes. only uh, at the bigger level, but even mm. at the smaller level. Mm. What, what is your take? How okay, the, so the government has handled this? Although I'm on the private sector side, today mm. I'll take... I'll try to be as objective as possible mm. and look at what... what or I'll try to critique both sides mm. and try to say that uh, the meeting with the president... So if I were the one... So first of all, I think uh, uh, the traders escalated this too fast to the highest office. Mm. Not all the issues should have gone that far. There are issues that would have been solved. Is, is it the traders? Is, is it the traders? It it is escalated it? No, no, no. Because if you have six issues, mm. you see, if if you, I, I think if you I, go to a school, I, no, I, if you're a parent, first way, if mm. you if you're a parent and you go to a school mm. and your child is complaining about how they slept, mm. you go and see the metro. Some of the how your child sleeps can be solved by metro. Mm. How they eat can be solved by the person at the canteen or whatever. But, the, the, but the, ultimately... The metron may say that uh, I can't handle this. Okay, so... And the, the headmaster should. No, so... But and my, the headmaster will say I can't no, handle this. No, the director no. should. There was a meeting mm. between the traders and the Ministry of Finance mm -hmm. prior to the meeting with the president. Mm. And uh, in that meeting with the Ministry of Finance, there are some issues that should have been solved at that level. And there are some issues that should have been left at presidential level. Secondly, the issues were so many. There was the issue of IFRIS, there was the issue of VAT threshold, there was the issue of import duty on textiles and apparels, non-standardization of import valuations, mm. uh, and competitive practices by investors. So I would say that IFRIS, so from my perspective, IFRIS has been mishandled by URI. And I think that traders had every right to complain right. because I think URI took them for a right didn't, didn't take them to proper education and expects them to take all the costs for this so-called innovation that's meant to expand the tax base. Mm. If you think that through if we spread as you pay more money, it's okay. Then you share the cost. At the very least, you bear it as government. And uh, uh, what do you make of the decision now that the, that the president take? The what president didn't take any decision. He took some decision. Which one? He said you can, you, can, you can stay away from buying the six million. No, no, the, no, no, no. The president... You can the, use your mobile phone. No, the president... And he also scrapped the... All those the things were there. What was in there? The application was there. Mm. The EFD was there. The internet option was there. The USSD option was there. The president almost engaged in tax education, just telling them there are these options you can choose. Right. But what we expect the president to do was to say government is going to pay for EFDs because, you know, these are the options. Someone's paying for data and things like that. All right. And so, gov so EFD is the only option where someone can work offline and the system synchronizes automatically. All right. So that didn't really happen. Now, the other thing that I saw in the traders' meeting is a lot of emotion. You know, a lot of emotion, which is understandable. On, side? on the traders' side. Okay. We, it, it's understandable, but what should have done is that they should have synchronized the issues into a policy position, read it properly, and, you know, oh, oh, but I felt that, that we, sometimes they're even contradicting each other. Okay. Some are taking political stance. Oh, we are, you MPs, you are coming to, you know, so when you're fighting, oh, you need as many allies as possible. Uh, if you threaten MPs and you say we are going to come you, and... You see, uh, you the know, other day in Parliament, yes. on, on, on Monday, there was mm. a discussion about VAT. Yes. And uh, the leader of opposition actually stood up and said, let's not rush this issue. There's a, a concerns which were raised by the trader, and there's a meeting tomorrow. Probably mm -hmm. we can revisit this issue uh, um, uh, the following day. But mm -hmm. he was not listened to. So, so mm -hmm. maybe the, the traders were right. No, the traders, that, that issue... No. No, no, not very fast. What I'm trying to say is that mm. the way tax policy is made in this country, there are things that can be rejected by government, by parliament. For instance, the five percent withholding tax on the sale of land in cities was and rejected. was rejected by parliament. So it means that 
it, it would have been possible for parliament to reject the 18% VAT and say we will do 16%. Mm. But we must also under appreciate that, uh, you know, at, in the, at the ESC level, we're in the process of standardization of VAT rates. Mm. It's only Kenya that has been at 16%, and this year they are raising to 18%. So there, there are also those things that we need to consider within the ESC. Right. We want to standardize. Mm. So how, how can we do that? On the present side, I'll say this. The president is also making a mistake. Some of these issues need to be handled by respective ministries. The ministry empower them to work. If everything stops at your door, like it means you rent the ministry of finance. The because president, the issue with if is the, the issue even when you're a minister, allow your technocrats to work. So the issue with IFRIS is a lot of it is operation, the high handedness, mm. the involvement of the army in operations and so on. This the ministry of finance can bear on. Did you say the, the army? Yes, of course, in operations at downtown. Oh, okay. Yes. So this is something that the ministry can bear up upon your and say, you know what? Mm. The army has no business in enforcing tax payment and things like that. So these are right. civilian affairs. All right. Let's give uh, Mr. Mawere a right of response. You've heard from uh, your two colleagues here on the show, but specifically from uh, um, Dr. Walugembe, who seems to say didn't handle this issue very far, very well. You rushed. You no, I didn't say with the rush. You said they rushed. They became emotional. You said they rushed to the highest office. Yeah, they escalated to, to the issue. To some extent, yeah. Yes, so um, let's hear from you. Uh, I, I, I think uh, saying we rushed is not right uh, because um, we have um, interacted with everybody mm. in this space. Uh, we started with the administrator himself, uh, the, that's the URA, the URA said we can't respond to some of these issues, go to parliament, we met different MPs, we met uh, the speaker, we petitioned the, uh, the leader, leader of opposition. opposition. Uh, they said, you know, these issues we no, can't handle. They come from in the house. Yeah, they, they come from the ministry. And the then, court debate. Exactly, the debate was there, but at the end of the day, it, actually it had even to stop so that they invite the ministers mm. from the Ministry of, of, of Finance mm. to come and sit in. Now, you can imagine that level of people ignoring 65% contributors of taxes. So is that why country. you're not happy with Parliament? Yes, we are. You're, we're, threatening, we're, we're, you're threatening to against some of the members. <laughs> because the truth be told, we have educated our brothers and sisters. Mm. We have people we think have served at the highest level of different organizations and they have retired and they are better to serve in these places. And we're going to urge many of them to go and serve. We might not go there ourselves, but I think we need people who understand levels of engagement. If you're discussing a tax issue and you don't engage the people who are going to suffer that tax regime, then that, that community needs to be disbandled because it's not forward thinking. Uh, then we also addressed ourselves to the president because Actually, the minister said those issues come from cabinet. So the issue of rushing, I think that's not very true. Mm. We were actually pushed to do that. People recommended, people we thought had our solutions recommended, go higher, go higher, go higher. Uh, and we did that. Now, when we met the president, he said these things we can solve. So he, 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 he showed... Oh, he, he, he demonstrated to us that he has all the powers to do these things. Uh, uh, and so we, we, we told, told, told him whatever we had, and uh, we expected him to address himself on those things. Unfortunately, the president scored so many goals, but from <laughs> offside. You're saying it again. Yes, from yeah. offside, because what he was talking about, it's very fine, longer term. What we presented, short-term solutions, things that were low-hanging fruits, saying, yes, it's economically right, the threshold can change. Maybe we can change it gradually, or we will change it in this kind of time frame, or this is how we will compensate and offset. Some of the things he had the powers to pronounce himself on, I think you are a continuously is misinforming the president because they want to have the status quo stand. They want to seem right. And we are saying some of the things you're not right. Listen to what we are saying. And, and you know what's very painful is government pronounced itself in 1999 uh, uh, and they said we can no longer do business. We don't even know how to do business. We even don't have the capacity to do business. And they went into privatization. Now, you privatized and people who took over that portion are saying, you know, you're going the wrong way. And then you argue. I think that's very wrong. 
They need to listen to this side of the story because we've been running businesses. We have been adhering to the tax regimes that have come because since VAT was introduced, mm. people have been uh, paying the VAT until the tax administration solution they brought, which is inference, could not fit into the dynamics of the local traders. Right. And that's what we are saying, and I think we think it's very logical. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Share with us your views using the WhatsApp line, which is 0703090090. We're going to go for a break. When we return, we'll hear from former presidential candidate Elton Joseph Mabilizi what he would do differently uh, on these issues of the tax um, and trade specifically. But we'll also continue the discussion with Dr. John Kakungul Walugembe. But one of the key things we'll be asking whether dialogue could be the solution to this issue or actually making the changes that the traders are looking uh, forward to. Because, as Mr. Mawere has said, there's a meeting on the 20th of June and they are already ironing out some of the issues that they will be taking to that meeting. Stay tuned, Radio 1 FM 90. We continue after this break. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Radio 1 FM 90. Thank you. Thank you so much for staying with us on Spectrum, live on Radio 1 FM 90. We are getting the feedback about the mood within the trading community following their meeting with President Yoweri Museveni, which occurred on Tuesday this week, where President Yoweri Museveni insisted and took a stance telling them that, look, stop being importers, become exporters. And we have heard from the representative of the traders here in studio that they are strongly considering that point which was made by the president. We don't know if you have particular demands to the president to be able to support you to realize what he actually said. I'll be giving you an opportunity to explain that. But let's hear from uh, Mr. Mabirisi. We have a situation here, taxes, uh, traders, and there, there might be so many other people out there listening to us who are equally complaining about taxes. I've heard from employees who are complaining about payee. I've heard about people who are complaining about different forms of taxes. As a person... Uh, who has followed closely these issues are. But as a leader uh, in your own right, uh, what do you think we need to do differently or what would you do differently on the issues of taxes? Yeah, if you are to solve the issue of uh, uh, taxes, mm. the increasing taxes uh, in Uganda, mm. we have to consider what is the cause, the root cause of this. Mm. The economy... Ec- uh, economically, we are not doing well mm. because of uh, the second pillar of NRM, which is uh, corruption. Uh, because of that, you find that on, they are looking that, for money one, on, from every corner. On that one, I will not challenge you. They don't the, have the where president to has get, also admitted. But where where these documents money where from. Mm. They are trying to, to look for the ways of getting taxes to get money. So what you, you would do is to consider your main source of income. Mm. So our main source of income here is agriculture. So how much money has been injected in agriculture? Because you, 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 need, uh, you need to get taxes. You find that it's little, but that is one of the things that uh, they could inject a, li- a lot of money. Another thing is to uh, to give a breathing space to traders, uh, where you create a wider tax base uh, that every everyone is paying tax. There are so many people who are not paying tax, and uh, the few who are able to pay, Mm. they squeeze them a lot. So you would widen that. Many people are paying tax. At the end of the day, you collect a lot of money. Uh, Third thing is to stop the the so-called investors Mm. who engage in small-scale businesses. They are just doing the same things that uh, people here are doing. Some of them, they are just workers, and they call them investors. So you stop that, and uh, people will be helped. Then another thing is about uh, uh, making ministers <laughs> to be real ministers. The ministers we have today, they are just idols. <laughs> you find that someone is just uh, uh, an image, uh, is just... Uh, there, but he cannot decide or say anything, and uh, maybe works. You see, when uh, uh, the collective. traders there were, is a collective responsibility. You we are running alone. there, and they are looking for for the solution. Mm. They, they went to ministers, and they could say, you know, let us wait 
for what the president will say. So uh, that one is also affecting us very much. Then you have to create some other avenue where you, you are to collect taxes from. Mm. If you don't have that, then there is a, you, you, there is a, uh, there's a big problem which you cannot just solve. Mm. And um, I will ask these traders, you know, last time there was a strike by teachers then after them, doctors, mm. then nurses, then these doctors on internship. And uh, when those ones rose, the traders were quiet. Mm. When teachers rose, they were quiet. So let us have a, a corrective response mm. where we join forces. So they have and been enjoying say, quietly. You know, mm. what you are doing is, is bad. You are just a few people of around one point. 1.4, they are enjoying the taxpayers' money. Mm. They are just misusing it. And uh, many ministers uh, were caught in um, uh, fraud and uh, embezzlement of government money. And you know, last time uh, when uh, they talked, uh, they released a report about Global Fund, many ministers were engaged into that. And today I wonder how can. Um, uh, just a, a war of and uh, today's putting on a, a gown for priest and is preaching about uh, uh, patriotism, patriotic, someone being patriotic. Mm. Those people who are in that cocoon, they are thieves. They have embezzled money for uh, sickle cell people, uh, for ch H HIV. So, but now they are going around, you know, we are preaching for patriotic, patriotism, how? Those are thieves. So, without dealing away with such people, mm. the economy cannot develop. So, you so want to, you now want to... the government is looking from all corners because they don't have money. Mm. Because they the economy is not growing. Dr. Olgembe. Mm. Well, you uh, critically actually pointed a number of issues mm. on the on the two sides. That I, I want to ask you: Do you have hope that uh, probably dialogue could lead to a solution? Do you see either sides actually caving in? And there are things. In? There are things that are fundamental. Mm. There are things that can where you can reach agreement. And I'll just mention here on each of the issues. All right. There was the issue of import duty on textiles and apparel, thirty-five percent. Mm. That's set as part of the current ESC common market, so it's which put in place a fourth band of 35%. So it's Why? difficult to deal it's with never that. How? The president can't. Okay. Even parliament. Because at this point, it's an ESC issue. Mm. We have agreed as a, all the these region. countries, as mm. a region, mm. that we want to develop our cotton textiles and apparel sector. But, and but part of we, that... We need to follow and see whether uh, actually that is happening no, in other it, countries. No, the, the, I'll, I'll come to you. I'll come to you. Let him No, the point is, mm. this import duty on textiles and apparels is meant to encourage the emergence of uh, the emergence of a local textiles and apparel sector. But you and, see, the, the reason why I'm telling you that probably we yes. need to look at what is happening in other countries, I heard mm. from the traders mm. themselves saying that uh, because of uh, that particular tax on, mm. uh, on the textiles, mm. people were buying from here, the Congolese and South Sudanese are now going to Kenya. That's where they're buying And the from. president said he does not Kenya want, the president said mm. his objective is not to make Uganda Dubai a re-export base primarily because that does that, you're not really solving anything. Right. You're importing and then you're re-exporting. Yes, you're making a small margin, but it's more, most preferable that you're actually making things and, 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 and you're exporting. So for me, I think on that issue, I don't see that president us. making any. Okay. And then some people are saying that if we should be done away with, that cannot be done away with. If this will continue. If this will continue. I think what should happen is the way that URA is enforcing it and the very mil militant and adversarial way in which it's pushing this. It needs to step back. It needs to engage stakeholders. Right. It needs to educate them. It needs to ensure that change takes time. You cannot force it down people's throats. Throat. Okay. And mm -hmm. there's also the issue of them taking advantage of the lot of disadvantaged traders. Someone brings a shirt, you say you pay 60,000. You're creating loopholes and opportunities for corruption. This, this ought to change, in my view. Mm -hmm. Now, on the trader's side, I would also say that they should also understand that government is pursuing an import substitution, export promotion strategy. This, it's not going to change. So, and I'm happy that my colleague here has mentioned that they're starting to think about this because at the end of the day, you're not going to compete with the 
Chinese when they are taking advantage of the existing legal regime. The question is, is the government supporting the local investors to actually step up? It doesn't because need to support. It, it has created an environment. The tax policy, for instance, Mr. favors Mr. manufacturing. Mr. Yes. Mm. We have actually heard from these traders who are saying mm. those investors who are coming here, they are backing from financial institutions in their countries who provide them the finances that they come to invest here. Okay, we, but we, how can the government... How can we have that kind of situation in that's what I, Exactly. That's what we have to start by discussing. Number one, mm. we are saying that when investors come here, they get investment license. We are also telling our traders, because for local, you need 50,000 US dollars to get an investment license. For foreigner, they need 250,000. See, this is a fifth of what the foreigner requires. So I want to encourage Ugandans, please go and apply for investment licenses. Don't complain that we are not getting incentives but without an investment using license. what? What do you mean? Invest using what? No, the traders have been trading for a very long time and we are telling them, okay. come together. Just like they're saying, come together, go and request for an investment license and start. Let's not complain that we're not getting the incentives when we've not taken the very first step. That's, I'm, and I'm trying to take the devil's advocate here. Because right. you can't say foreigners are getting but incentives. You're not, you're not doing the devil's advocate. You're 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 let me take the incentive. The, the, we're saying foreigners are getting incentives mm -hmm. and we have not applied. If you have not requested for incentives and denied, then you can't really complain. Then the other issue, is you talked about the issue of dialogue. I think the president in, in some respects is simply buying time. Buying time? Yes. Because you can imagine he was meeting the traders and the VAT Amendment Act was being passed by parliament. By parliament. At the same time. With the same threshold. So you think the president wasn't aware? I don't and then in the meeting, he ignored VAT, ignored all these things. He was just there on IFRIS telling them, but I have tested the machine. You can also use it. He was, you can also use the application. You can. So there's also a bit of time, eh? you mm -hmm. know, stringing them along mm -hmm. so that at some point, you know, some of these issues are either overtaken by events or something like that. So for me, I would mm -hmm. say some issues can be negotiated. Then the issue around investors and their un uncompetitive practices. I think here government really needs to come with good. I know the president, the issue of investors is very close to his heart. In fact, I saw him get pissed when people are saying, <laughs> you don't support local investors. No, we are not saying, we are simply saying we want a fair playing field. That is all. All right. Yes. Well, Mr. Maweri, I'm giving you an opportunity to respond, but there's a comment here that came directly to you. Good evening, Anderson. Hopefully all is well. Before I go to Museveni, can that youth leader from Casita take us through, briefly, through their strategic plans for exports to address the huge importation bill for Uganda? And I'm coming to you. You said you have agreed to look at the long-term issues that the president is putting across. So one of the listeners actually wants to hear your strategies. What are some of the things you intend to invest in uh, as even you consider those long-term uh, choices the president was talking about? Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I want to... But you're also free to respond to some of those issues that came yes, across. Yes, absolutely. I'll start, I'll start with the exp our exportation strategy. Mm. Uh, we have started to advocate for an export highway for traders. Uh, and uh, we are thinking that uh, we've created a lot of networks abroad. Um, I think traders have been to in, uh, every country and almost they've reached every factory that manufactures mm. uh, anything in this world. And uh, we're thinking that we're going to start pushing for every four containers that come into this country. We have one container that goes uh, to that particular country. One with, one. with, with the things, that's, that's the beginning. That's okay. And, and uh, what we're asking government is to deliberately invest in that cost of exportation. Can we have the, the, the infrastructure sorted to do that kind of exportation. Uh, we even, at, an, at, a, at a certain time, we asked the government, could we have our own small Ugandan towns within some of the countries that we think our commodities can be taken? And we talked about Congo. We said, why do traders go and they arrive in different places with the commodities from this country? Can't we gazette a certain like Uganda West town, Nile. like West we, yes, like we see China town, like we see in these other countries. Can mm. we have a Ugandan town in Sudan where people arrive and it's gazetted by government for the for the destination for the of the goods? Yes, mm. so you you help to 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 put create together, a hub. To create a hub for mm. the traders. These things are not are not being addressed or even responded to. Uh, so that's one of our, our strategies. But two, we're also saying, can we? increase the level of quality that we produce in this country. Now, for every investor that has been brought to this country, to Uganda, they are coming from either Kenya, Tanzania. They have another factory of the same. Talk about people making oil, cooking oil. They have the same factory in Kenya, the same factory in Rwanda, the same factory in Burundi. Now, where am I going to export oil from Uganda? 
if you it's talking about clothes, can I export clothes to Kenya that are made from Uganda? If you're talking about milk, can I export milk from Uganda to Kenya? If you're talking about liquor, Uganda breweries suffered with exporting liquor to, to, to Rwanda. Our very own Bella Wine has suffered with Q Max from Uganda, and she cannot export. These are the huge players we know in the, in the industry. Now, me a trader, how am I going to facilitate that kind of export? And these are things we're speaking about. Mm. Uh, uh, and we, we, we are saying that we want to export. Mm. Can you gazette, can you gazette a fund to support that, that value chain, that system? UDB? Can UDB give us the money? These are yes. the questions we're asking. Yes. The money is there. It definitely. is there. You it is apply. there. Mm-hmm. Traders have applied for that money. You can't apply as a know. trader. You're not eligible. This is what I'm saying. When we talk about traders, people think <laughs> people think we're talking about so only, 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 only the guys down. facility for exports. No, I, I, I will say you the example. facility exists. I'll but what you, we are saying I'll, I'll is, you, mm. you can't say. You see, you can't say that uh, I'm a man, but I applied to women's fund. To, to, to apply as a group, I'm a man. I went to women's I, fund I, and they I, refused to give me money. You're not eligible. I, I, I will tell you, UDB money what? is made for manufacturers, what? people in human capital. Women. So if, if you're a trader again, so there is no way you can go and get. I'll tell you. Not even the long term. term. Mm. I'm talking about manufacturers, Uganda manufacturers who are part yes. of Casita. They are the okay. members. You know, we have corporate members. And these are industries. These are manufacturers. And they have applied for UDB loan. Trust me, tell me anyone who has got And is our member. We oh, don't have right, let's and get we're a, manufacturers. Let's get some comments so, coming so, in. So maybe one thing that I want Does to say. Manufacturers part of the Traders Association. No, no, no that's another uh, issue. Uh, the country mm. can achieve economic development. All right. But it will never achieve economic growth because you cannot separate growth from the indigenous people. All right. We have comments coming in. Muto from Bombo saying, long time I've not heard from Mabirizi and he sends his regards. <laughs> he says, first, Mabirizi is a very articulate man. I am proud of him. However, my concern is that together with this group, they are missing that President Museveni dodged their concerns as a tactical move. After the 1996 elections, Mr. Museveni made a U-turn on indigenous capital development, took them out one at a time with great skill and economic rhetoric to match it. Greenland, Sembule, now Kampala traders. Tax is one of the weapons in the arsenal that can be used. The goal was to dis- to disable, uh, they said the goal was to disable the growth of local class of uh, the rich people, independent state patronage for sub- to, so that they can become part of the a state patronage for survival. That would mean a social group capable of supporting the opposition, threatening his hold on to power. Non-indigenous capital receive preferential treatment because to survive, they have to be dependent on him personally. And two, they are far removed from local political gymnastics. Mabirizi makes a good argument. Poverty is a tool. Well, Richard, I've received your comments. Uh, Probably I might take that into consideration. Uh, Hopefully, um, it's one of the things that we can look at. Anthony, good evening. Spectrum, we should be careful how we handle matters concerning the growth of our country. What we need as Ugandans is to work hard to face the competition in business. Ugandans should start doing big business like other people do, putting blames uh, on others is not the way to go. We are feeling pain about the tax because we are not doing well in business. We are so lazy, bad-hearted. Even when you give them containers of goods to start up, their their lives on their lives is on credit. They swing, they swing you and disappear. Uh, than keeping in contact, is that how to grow? I was in China before. We should remove envy, jealousy, and wickedness. Those are barbaric behaviors. That's a comment from Anthony there. We think we are not doing well enough uh, in terms of uh, um, values yeah. uh, as yeah. far as trade is concerned. Really? Let me have another comment. According to the public finance and fiscal policy, taxation creates uh, this this utility in public, whereas government expenditure creates social welfare in public. That is maximum social advantage. In other words, when government imposes taxes on goods and services, people feel the pinch. When government spends on public goods and services like schools, hospitals, and roads, people feel happy. This is the fundamental principle of public revenue. That's a comment uh, from another listener who didn't leave a name behind. Esa Uturiatunga writes in and says, the problem we have in Uganda is misuse of public revenues. By those in government, it is high time government listen to the demands from the traders because they are the ones feeding government through paying taxes. Imagine paying 18% VAT, 30% income tax, rental tax, import tax, payee, and NSSF for employees. ETC, at the end you end up falling sick 
But on reaching to the hospital, you find that there is no medicine. A lot needs to be done. Yiga Samuel, Mary, listening in from Nam Londo in Boyo Gerere. Thank you for the show, Mr. Some seven is idea of halting importation is good, but it needs time. You don't just come out of the blue. And another thing, corruption is also a menace eating up this country. Mr. Walgembe, when will Ugandans be eligible for UDB loans? That's a comment from Wilson Bikakanga Muyenga. Well, those are the comments that are coming in from the listeners. And I'll begin very quickly with uh, Mr. Mavirizi, your quick response to some of the issues that have been put across, but also your closing remarks because we are coming towards the end of this show. So we can say a lot. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate those people for their deliberations. Mm. Uh, we can say a lot, but all these uh, centers on one thing. Mm. The, the people we have in the government are corrupt. And uh, they have overstayed, and as we talk today, they are fed out of ideas. Because there are things which you can just look at and see and say, why are these people doing this instead of doing this? For example, these traders missed out one thing to communicate it to the president. The issue of those people who buy things here, uh, for example, the Southern Sudan people, the Congolese, Rwandese, all those ones now have, are, are leaving they have stopped buying things from here. Why? Mm. Because of those huge, huge taxes. So, uh, when you talk about uh, these people that they want to be funded, the so-called uh, local traders or local manufacturers, forget uh, about that. Uh, this government cannot do that. It cannot do that because the, the poverty that we are facing today in Uganda is one of the plans of the current government. So if you want to overcome all that, let us have a new government. And it's uh, uh, about the sensitization of people. If you get to know that you are the one paying taxes, which these people are misused, mm. so you must raise up, um, talking about masses and demand, uh, where your taxes, the services that you are supposed to get, and overthrow down this government. That is the solution. All right, let's hear from Dr. Walgebe. Okay, first of all, we need to do a lot of work in improving the business environment and lowering the cost of business. Taxation is one bit of it, and we shouldn't overtax. There's an optimal tax rate. If you overtax, it does not increase the revenue you earn. And I hear people saying many people don't pay taxes. I don't know who, 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 say, who speaks this kind of thing. We have an indirect tax regime based on consumption. So the more you consume, the more you pay tax. So who is not paying tax? There's no one who is not paying tax. You, I need that evidence. Been an who is not paying some tax? Are not tax? Which ones? Like like which ones? No people consumption. If, if you hide in your farm, house. if you hide in your farm, so long as you're using water, so long as you're using inputs, you're paying tax. Banang. We need to understand tax can be direct and indirect. Okay, and in Uganda's not, they're, case, okay, they're not paying income tax. But they're eligible. If they're not, you are, should just follow them. Anyone who wants income in Uganda is eligible to pay income tax, including those in agriculture. So the people arguing that certain people are not paying tax, I don't understand where this argument comes from. Now, the other issue is we need to organize ourselves. And I think for the traders, my, my recommendation is next time, sit down, do a proper policy position, take it to parliament. When you meet the president, share this so that, you know, it's, it's on record, you know, so that some of these issues can be followed up even beyond the direct engagements you have with him. And most importantly, let's ensure that you have a fair playing field mm. for foreign and local investors. And local investors should stop being, and all of us local business, let's stop being crybabies, oh, you're favoring foreign investors, blah, blah. Do something. Go and apply for an investment license. Tell the president, I applied for land in Namambe. They gave the Chinese, they didn't give me. If you've not applied, then you don't have a valid argument. And this is my point. We need to be more proactive. We need to be less... And that gentleman mentioned it. Some of us are not even dependable. Someone will borrow, go to UDB, borrow, and then use that money to buy a personal house instead of messing it in the business. So these are things we need to also look at. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Moore, you have the final say on this discussion, but most importantly, we, we want to know what's the next way forward. Uh, we've been hearing in other circles that are actually there's a two-month strike that is likely to come up. Is this something that you're thinking about, or this is mere hearsay? Uh, all decks are on the table. 
and uh, we will take um, all the levels that we have to undertake or actions to be able to, to, to put out our grievances and be heard. So um, there is a, a likelihood of a two-month strike? I cannot rule it out. Um, I'm a representative of traders, mm. uh, and, and uh, that is very possible. We lived two years without working, and uh, it doesn't make sense to come back and work and your business is being eaten up and all your capital goes. It makes sense to close for two months and save your capital. Uh, but uh, just to speak on, um, on, 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 the, on the meeting meeting that we're going to have with the president, uh, we, um, we have decided and we're very anxious to meet him again because he spoke about a narrative of um, um, uh, helping the traders transition into manufacturers. These are things that we've been craving for. Uh, we have presented ourselves on uh, uh, what my brother is saying. We need to apply. We have applied uh, several times for the land, for these concessions. The demonstration came because we wanted to meet the president. You can imagine. Mm. People who pay 65% of the taxes had to close down for four days to meet the, his ex as a president. And he, Uganda Visual Authority is organizing a conference in Berlin, in Tokyo, in, uh, in Sao Paulo, in Ottawa. Beijing, Ottawa, spending millions of money. Taking the president to meet 30 people, potential. Even doesn't know that they have money, potential. When they profile them, you go to, your, to, to Uganda Visual Authority website. Let them show the profiles of the people that the president meets in these meetings. Mm. Zero. Some of them don't even have the money. They are street guys they bring together, put in a conference, and president chatters his plane and goes to meet them. And the people who are in his country want to go and meet him, and it is impossible. They have to strike first. I think that shows the level that the government is at, not interested in economic growth of the Ugandans, but it's a, it's very much embracing development. You can achieve embr- uh, development with foreigners in your country, but the country can never grow. Uh, then I want to speak uh, lastly to very quickly to things we want to do as traders. Uh, one, we want to transition. That's very true. The market is saturated with traders. Everywhere you'll find 10 boutiques in the same location, 20 retail shops in the same location, selling the same things. The traders themselves have the pressure to transition. They don't have the, the amenities and the support to do that. So we need that. All right. uh, secondly, we still need uh, somebody to cushion the export value that right. we need to invest in. Thank you so much. All right, Amat. Thank you, gentlemen, for making time to come and discuss and also share your views with uh, the listeners out there. We must thank you, dear listeners, for sharing your views with us. They helped us to shape the discussion here in studio. Tomorrow, two hours of analysis, of analysis of the top events of the week, and you bet me this one will be one of the issues. That is on Spectrum Extra. Join me then. Until then, up next we'll have the news in English with Miss Josephine Dagano. Thereafter, we'll have the Soul Train with B.B. Junior. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90.